I'd like to welcome you guys to this week's report. Today is Thursday, December 7th. We've had another uh, good week of weather here in Southern California, and it uh, looks like it's going to be good again this weekend. The only, uh, only thing we have in the forecast is some Santa Ana winds that are going to blow, you know, in that same little canyon zone there uh, that affects Anacapa, the south end of, uh, or east end of uh, Santa Cruz Island. Um, that little plume there, but other than that, it looks great. I mean, the Channel Islands look great. Clemente, everywhere looks uh, very fishable, and even the offshore stuff. If um, if anybody's gonna go out and look for tuna out there, Cortez or Tanner or below Clemente, um, which they have not really this week at all. I know they got some last weekend, but uh, that's definitely on the table as well, weather-wise. Anyway, so let's head up to the Channel Islands. Um, you know, that area, it's uh, still biting, and uh, biting really good right now, actually, based on the reports I'm seeing. You know, the uh, most of the three-quarter day boats, full-day trips and overnight trips are uh, fishing uh, sheephead and whitefish early, and then uh, heading out and fishing rockfish. And uh, with the weather we have in the forecast, it should be a really good opportunity to go out and, uh, you know, hit Rosa, hit the west end of Santa Cruz, target some of those bigger rockfish in general, and uh, probably make for some great fishing. You know, if you're looking to get out one more time before the end of the year to load up your freezer, now would be the time to do it, as there is no guarantee the weather will be as cooperative the rest of the uh, the rest of the year before the season closes on December, on January 1st. Um, Along those lines, you know, uh, both Santa Barbara and uh, Ventura have boats that are running daily, and uh, you make a jump on your favorite. I know the uh, Stardust, the Coral Sea, the Aloha Spirit, some of the best boats that I hear about up there as far as consistency. But there's other boats as well. And I know there's half-day boats that are fishing the coast and you gotta shut out some uh, bass, sand bass calicos there as well. Um, so yeah, good time of year to get up there. So heading down the coast, you know, uh, I'm going to head to Camp, uh, San Clemente Island here in a second, but before I do, you know, uh, the pride at a 22nd Street Landing has been uh, just absolutely slaying the halibut on their last few uh, trips. And I don't, I don't know where they're fishing. I know they're uh, blurring backgrounds out on shots, so I don't think they want other people to know where they're fishing either, uh, which I don't blame them. And um, I kind of have an idea, but uh, it's not my place to share that information as it's not my information to share. But uh, they are uh, doing real well, and they say they're seeing some sea bass as well. So. You know, it's just a matter of time, you know, maybe the right lunar cycle. I lost track of lunar cycle here while I was uh, in recovery from uh, my knee replacement, but I think we should be around a, a new moon, maybe? I don't know. Like I said, I didn't really keep track. But I'd keep an eye on that and see how that affects that uh, the sea bass biting. They're marking them, they're not biting. They might start biting when we come onto the newer full moon. Um, I know they've got trips online, and, uh, you know, it's just a remarkable amount of halibut. I think they had like 38 the other day, which is a... Uh, Pretty wild, but uh, anyway, you can check them out. And uh, you know, speaking of Clemente, the uh, Ed got more coverage this week from uh, my friend Benny Florentino, who went out there and uh, had good bass fishing. Uh, looks like on the backside, and also uh, got us some a uh, couple nice yellows on the front. And uh, they were on bird schools, he, I guess. But uh, and he got a nice big calico on the iron as well. But uh, yeah, you know, it just shows you there's no uh, there's no off switch or time of year affecting, you know, the possibility to uh, have service iron yellows and calico bass here in Southern California. You know, if these fish are feeding on the surface, they're feeding on the surface. It doesn't matter what time of year it is, what the water temp is, anything like that. And, uh, you know, if you're a private boater, I don't care what island you're fishing. If you're fishing anywhere from the Coronados, the Channel Islands, Clemente, Kathleen, and all that, if you're running in the lee of the island, I always keep an eye out for service activity. That could be yellows, could be bonita, whatever. But, you know, sometimes you'll see birds, like it sounds like Benny's guys did there. But other times you'll just see, you know, breezers of fish. It's no different than the way you see tuna offshore. And a lot of times yellows, especially at the Cornells and, and Clemente, in my limited experience at Cornells, my more extensive experience at Clemente, um, some they'll have birds on them, some they won't. But they'll, they'll just be a little deviation of the way the surface of the water looks. And if it's not windy and it's calm, you'll notice it. And if you do notice it, I tend not to drive over it because a lot of times I'll just be a spot of fish and just cruising along just below the surface. And um, you can kind of figure out which direction they're going most of the time, just like you do offshore with tuna. And, you know, just get into a place where you can throw a jig in front of them. And uh, more often than not, you'll get a bite. We had a trip uh, 
a couple years ago, Clemente were running along the same thing, same time of year and everything. Just got a uh, Facebook reminder of it uh, the other day. So nice to see Clemente still biting. Good grade of Calico, nice grade of Yellowtail. I don't really have a lot of coverage anywhere else except on, along the beach. Uh, my friend Dave Valdez went out. Uh, it was just a break wall the other night. He's a fly fisherman, um, which having been on the boat once with fly fishermen, I understand is a very difficult thing to do in the first place. And uh, to do that at night while trying to keep your boat off the rocks, the break wall just seems kind of insane to me, but uh, Dave seems to like it. And uh, I'm not surprised he's wearing safety glasses because uh, those. Uh, Saltwater flies, they get a little lead in the head of them. They'll uh, feel like getting shot with a BB gun if you get hit by one. I've been hit by several. So it's uh, good for Dave. And, um, you know, I think anybody going out right now would probably have a, a good shot at uh, catch the fish to wall. You know, this used to be my favorite time of year to, uh, to go out and fish. It gets dark early enough. I like to get there, you know, at sunset. And then uh, with the calmer weather we've had, you don't fight the wind like you do during the summer. Um, Speaking of that, my friend Lane Killian was out at the wall yesterday, I think, and um, he was streaming live on Instagram, I think, but he was catching some calicos on the uh, Zymiki backdrop jig, which is a little slow pitch jig, and uh, looked like a lot of fun. And, you know, I'm going to, seeing this new technology come out, uh, it just shows you that while things, the more things change, the more they stay the same. You know, for years, uh, when Matt and I were fishing bass tournaments, we used to use a small jig like that. It's called a, a, a Jackie jig. The owner makes so This is a smaller one, but it's only the other the bigger one's only about you know a quarter bigger. I don't know what size this is here. It should be printed on there. This one has a single hook. We fished with this for a treble hook, but um, we did really well in a lot of sand bass and calico tournaments fishing that little jig. I mean, 15, 20 pound bags on tough days and we never talked about it back then because uh, that was one of our secret baits. But um, you know when there's suspended fish, drop a little jig like that down on a slack line. You want your line as slack as possible. A lot of those, it really darts right on the way down. Those fish will eat it. If you make it to the bottom, bounce it a couple times, burn it up 10 feet, throw it back at freeze pool and they'll, uh, they'll jump on it. Uh, you know, that uh, that new jig, the backdrop it has, you know, with the assist hook, seems like a little bit better hookup ratio. But this had a real small treble hook on it and um, you would twist off fish if, uh, you know, if they're, if you pull too hard on them. So one of the one of the things we would do is uh, once we hook the fish on it, we'd kind of back our drags off a little bit, and just keep the rod slightly bent and wind those fish up. Those sand bass, uh, bigger ones, especially roll around, and uh, they will very easily dehook themselves. But uh, there you go. The uh, owner uh, or the owner Jackie Jig or the Dimiki backdrop. I don't even know if they make this anymore. Um, so the other thing is, uh, you know, I, my friends uh, Tom and Cash Troop, father-son duo out of uh, San Diego came up and fished Long Beach uh, over the weekend, had really good results. And if you guys don't know Tom and Cash, uh, they're, a, you know, a father-son team that fished the SBS Saltwater Bass Series, Tournament Series. Um, they live in San Diego, they've got a little small aluminum boat. And, uh, sorry, my wife was walking in on me there. and. Uh, Boats always sinking, all kinds of issues with that. Old beat up trailer fighting with all the time. But these guys put in the work. I'll tell you what, they, for that little aluminum boat they got, they sure travel a lot and they fish really hard. And what I like to see guys doing that as opposed to nowadays, a lot of people just rely on technology and say, hey, I don't need to go practice or pre fish or anything like that. I can just go to the, the spots where I know Isers, Newport Pipe, whatever up here, you know, the stuff down the ARs down in San Diego or up in the Bay, those types of things. And um, while you catch fish doing that, if those spots aren't biting, you're really left without anything. So, you know, when I used to travel a lot more to fish bass during, during when I fished tournaments, I'd go to a lot of areas where I didn't have much experience. So what I would do is I'd go to the spots that I knew and spend two or three hours there of the trip just kind of figuring out how they fish and everything. Then I spend the rest of the trip kind of prospecting around and finding new areas. And um, I did that bass fishing down in San Diego in the San Monica Bay up in Ventura. I do that for rockfish. I do that wherever I'm fishing. You know, even I'm running to Clemente, I'll sometimes go to areas I've never been. Kind of see how they lay out, see what's happening, instead of just sitting there and beating the spots that I know bite to death. And uh, what that does is it expands your range uh, as an angler. And um, I always preach that, you know, Tom is definitely someone who listens to that and he'll give me feedback on how he does on trips. But uh, 
The other day he went out and um, they went and fished their stock spots up here and fishing was really slow. So he decided to start looking around some more and um, kind of got out of his known areas. And you know, if you're using like the, the C-Map or the Simrad chart or the Navionics chart, um, you can see all the structure that's around. It's, it's no secret anymore. But there's so much of it in some areas, you need to figure out what's happening before you'll actually catch the fish there. And uh, what he did is he went around and he struggled for most of the morning. And then he finally kind of figured a few things out. And then, you know, in, in, with sand bass fishing, it's really understanding the depth range they're in, the type of structure they're relating to, what type of bait fish are around, how's the whole thing look on the meter. And um, you can put those pieces together every day or over a longer period of time. And he put them together that day and it ended up having really fantastic fishing with a lot of nice sand bass in the, you know, four to six pound range. Uh, some of the best fishing he's had, he said up here. And uh, it's fantastic to see that, you know, they had a great day and they learned some new areas and some, more importantly, they learned how to read what's going on. So if the next tournament they come up here, they may go up there and win the tournament on one of those spots. But if those fish aren't there, they now know that, hey, I did this, this, and this to find X result. Now, if X isn't working, I can kind of look around some more and find the next result for this day and hopefully have uh, good success as well. So, uh, and that applies to everything. I'm talking about sand bass here, but it applies to calico bass, it applies to yellowtail, it applies to sea bass, halibut, offshore fishing, tuna, marlin, everything. Every fish in the ocean relates to structure, forage and current and they're going to be in predictable spots and once you figure out sand bass the next step halibut caligos whatever that's easier rockfish easier 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 and then the more species you have pretty soon it just becomes second nature to pay attention to what you're seeing and look for the components that are going to add up to you catch the fish that day whatever it is you're fishing for um yeah i uh, really don't have a whole lot else today um uh, I, you know, there really hasn't been much coverage offshore or anything. I know they got some fish over the weekend, but, uh, you know, that's really old news at this point. You might as well, uh, you know, throw a dart in a dartboard with that, that old information this time of year. But uh, I was hoping to fish this weekend, but I think, uh, you know, if I did, I feel up to it. But if I did, I'd probably end up in divorce court because of all the stuff I've had my wife need, <laughs> need to help me with here the last three weeks. And the fact that I'm not okay yet in her eyes. Uh, and I don't blame her, you know, it's only three weeks out, but uh, I'm hoping to get out at least one or two more times this year. So keep my fingers crossed that I continue to recover normally and uh, get back out. But in the meantime, I hope you guys have a great weekend and uh, good luck if you fish.